Hi everybody, Beth here from Access Paranormal. For this week's I Wanna Know, which is all about paranormal experiments. Now, it sounds a little creepy, a bit Frankenstein, but for some who may not be familiar with the term, it's probably more correct if I say paranormal investigation experiments. So it kind of gives it a bit more of um, the kind of reasoning and where it comes from. Um, yeah, a little less Frankenstein, more about the afterlife. So um, just before I do talk, um, I actually um, am wearing um, some earrings here. They're actually uh, mini coffins, and I was wearing them today, and someone said, oh, lovely earrings. I'm like, oh, they're just coffins, and yeah, the conversation stopped. So anyway, uh, just for others who have also mentioned it as well, they are coffin-shaped earrings in celebration for Halloween happening in three weeks' time as of this recording as well. Oh, hi, Andrew, good to see you here, mate. So enough about my jewellery selection, let's talk about some really cool stuff. Paranormal investigation experiments. Um, you may have seen some people talk about it um, on social media. Some people might be trying different stuff. You might be thinking, what's it all about? Why are we doing it? What's it for? Um, hi, Ross. Good to see you here, lovely. And it's interesting because um, as investigators, we when we go out and we, we experience certain things or we feel or see or we hear about other people experiencing something um we kind of it, it sparks our curiosity even more we're not here for a haircut and a pizza we're here to learn about the possibility of the afterlife so that's what's really cool about paranormal investigation experiments is the fact that um it's another way in which we can find out or explore on our own or look at different ways in which we can recreate something that may have happened to us and we're able to um you know explore further on that and and even share experiences with other investigators as well um i'm waiting for things to transfer Best way to pass the time. Oh, good. I'm glad to help. <laughs> I'm glad to be your entertainment for tonight. So it's really, really cool. Um, I'll, first, I'll talk a little bit about the kind of experiments that I've I've involved myself in um, and also the ones that I'm, I'm looking at doing at the moment. Now, traditionally, when it comes to investigating, uh, uh, quite a few people um, sort of roll out the whole idea of audio in a location enticing possible activity. So say, for instance, there was a, a World War II um, sort of bunker area, say, for instance, and um, someone's able to use sirens or or sounds of big bang sort of um, band sort of um, uh, music so that you know that wonderful 1940s style sounding music and and playing these kinds of sounds in locations that have the history of people that would have remembered it, it doesn't necessarily even have to have been there at the time but if there are people there say even in a retirement village I think you would have a plethora of different types of musics sort of so from obviously from a certain um, age and and along as well well but it's using that as a way to see whether or not emotion is um, in you know sort of brought up and 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 entices some sort of possible communication which can work really well and I've seen it work really well in some locations where we've had some interesting things happen and then of course like with most stuff when it comes to the paranormal not everything um, always eventuates with stuff like that it can be a bit of hit and miss for myself I found that it's probably been about 50 50 there's you, you're kind of there's a possibility of something happening and there's a possibility of something not happening as well hi Amy hi Vicky good to see you guys here and um, so yeah so traditional sounds it's cut sorry mate it's kind of like using the sounds that were known to that particular location or the people that would have lived there that's traditionally how um, sounds and or music would be used so what I'm actually now starting to do is actually do the complete opposite so uh, there's a possibility that um, emotions can be evoked from something that sounds familiar for myself now I'm actually trying to look at it just as sound being sound so in say for instance our World War two example I'm actually um, looking at um, playing songs from Metallica dance trance music all the kind of stuff that is completely unrelevant to that particular location and all the people that would have lived there to see whether or not the same thing happens so I mean sound being vibration it's all about sound waves does something does the same thing happen well would it be worse would it be like well what's what is this noise <laughs> bad taste of music but we you know what is this noise you know um about or is it usually just purely vibration are we looking at it the wrong way is, is it does emotion have to be a part of it can it just be the fact that the sound entices something in the environment in order for something to possibly happen hi Raylene hi Amy um so yeah there's there's these different types of ways in which I'm thinking of, of, of making it completely opposite so I've only literally just started doing that but that is based on um, this all for me was based on the fact that um, I had a, um, a, a situation where um, I was in a private location 
and we heard music and it was um, this beautiful sort of brassy sound sort of big uh, sort of band type sounding style music and it was in a an abandoned asylum at the time and uh, I remember thinking you know is this is this residual could this be something else and that's where that that started from so it had started from something that I I had previously experienced as well um, so that's one part of it too that's from some of the stuff I might be I've, I've actually just started working on myself um, in the past I've also used different types of sound files so things that could possibly trigger I've mentioned this before but if you uh, may not have heard it there is a website called freesound.org really great website um, all free sounds free to, to register and you can have things like people walking talking machines using uh, devices TV switches it's all the kind of environmental sounds around us that people have recorded and have actually um, loaded into this website for free so it's really really awesome I love it um, I've got a, a fairly large uh, sound library myself but I also go and um, use this one in as well just in case there might be something I haven't you know used yet and I thought oh geez I'm not gonna have time to record that or find a recording that's where it is excuse me <coughs> lovely so there's that too. So freesound.org, really, really good. If you haven't started using it or if you, you have, don't know about it, go and have a look and check it out. There's also a YouTube video that I have on Facebook and on YouTube as well, which is um, how to create your own sound file using the sounds from this website or using free software as well. So if you want to go and check that out, you can do so um, on accessparanormal.com uh, and also, as I said, on Facebook. Now, those are to the kind of the outside environment stuff when it comes to, to in experiments. A lot of us tend to look at our environment and, and see if we can try and recreate it or see uh, whether or not we can test it out with what we know in the best way we can. And it is pretty restricting sometimes. We don't always get to go to the same location where something had happened and be able to recreate it. So another, as, as, as most know, when, when phenomena happens, I'll either go, it's either coming from the outside or it's coming from the inside. And so sometimes you can actually look at paranormal experiments from the inside as well. So we have a look at it from, from a psychological perspective. Uh, probably the most well-known, I would say, is probably the Gansfeld experiment, um, which is, you know, basically sensory deprivation. Your senses are deprived, they're stopped and they're hidden. Um, and to see whether or not something in your mind or your subconscious comes up to be able to help um, to, uh, sort of de decipher the information around you um, because um, your senses are, are pulled away, your traditional senses are pulled away. Now remember we're built to survive, uh, fight or flight and <laughs> my monitor's having fun today. Ooh, it's paranormal. Ah! And so um, that might be one, uh, so, you know, that having that sort of um, thing with, with, with have a sen sensory deprivation um, has been some really interesting results. Now, I've done it myself. Um, that's been interesting. The first time I did it, I, um, I started rocking back and forth. And, and someone said, you know, looks like you're about to go under. I, I felt myself feeling very, very tired. But, um, but I was told that that's sometimes a sign of someone about to go under, which is very interesting. Um, in my experience, I've found those who are less likely to consider themselves sensitives or mediums tend to have more success with it as opposed to those who are actually considered to, to feel that they do have that kind of ability, um, which is really interesting considering it, it kind of cuts all your senses off. It's, and then again, that, that could be almost a whole experiment idea in, its, in itself just on that, that theory alone. But really interesting. Now, for those who may not know, when you're doing it, you look really, really creepy. Um, you, you've got cut out um, um, sort of, what is it, the um, ping pong balls, and they stick them over your eyes. So you've got to have some light, and it has to be red light. So it looks even way creepier. And you've got this, these two balls over your eyes. You look like, you know, something from, you know, a horror movie. Um, and your ears, your sound is generally, it's white noise, but it could be, uh, blue noise or pink noise or anything like that and sometimes there could be even meditation music in that as well so there's that too um, but it, it's a really really interesting thing and it is quite simple to set up as well so if it's something that somebody wants to try I know that there are some um, paranormal investigation nights here where people actually end up setting those up and having guests go through it and they've had some really interesting experiences as well so maybe it isn't always just about um, having stuff happening on your outside environment you can actually look at stuff that's happening psychologically as well so um, there's also that too. I know that there's Sarah from the Paranormal X-Files. Shout out to Sarah and the team. Um, she's doing what is she has termed as the Phyllis experiment. Now, for those who may not know, um, you may or may have heard of the Philip experiment. 
literally it is um, trying to create a ghost. And I know it's like, well, if that's the case, why don't we just all do it? <laughs> but <laughs> there is a set criteria and obviously um, there are things that have to happen and how it all works out as well. So, um, hi, Damo, how are you? Hey, Chrissy, good to see you here, sweetie. So there's that too. Um, and I love the fact she's called it Phyllis because Philip... Um, obviously being the first lot, um, you know, go and have a look on the internet, have a good read. There's also, uh, have a look at what is known as the skull experiment, which is S C O L E skull experiment. Very, very similar type thing. They had different types of phenomena. It wasn't necessarily about a person. It was about the intention of energy and the changing around and, and the movement, um, in, in a seance room. They had, they apparently reported things lifting up and, and objects moving about and all that sort of stuff. Fascinating to, to read about. Obviously, I, as I often do, um, see if you can find some information that a lot of skeptics have actually come up, um, come up with and researched and looked at as well. And, and some people say that there was fraudulent um, stuff going on at the time as well. But I think it's really healthy to at least have a bit of a read of that information too, not just about um, from those who actually did the research themselves as well. So... Yeah, it's literally like creating a ghost. That takes a bit more time. It's not kind of like, you're, let's test this out a little bit or let's kind of do this over gradually. Like it, it's got to be set over a certain amount of time and it's literally intention into someone. Um, okay, so this person is going to have this characteristic, this personality, this way of thinking. They're going to look like this, blah, blah, blah. And this group of people intentionally focus on that weekly um, for months on end and literally end up creating an entity. So that's it's the whole thought form um, idea. So if you want to have a look at that as well on the internet, thought form is where that, the, um, I say theory, but it's loosely based. It's more well, more that idea comes from where that um, point of, um, you know, the experiment idea originates from as well. Hi, sweetheart, how are you? So there's that too. So you've got that. Um, so yeah, Phyllis Experiment. Do check her out. Um, Sarah from Paranormal X-Files. She also has a blog as well called Living Life in Full Spectrum too. So um, check it out. She'll obviously be giving updates on what's happening there. I'll be I'll be watching as well because it'll be fascinating to see what eventuates from that too. So um, I also noticed when I was in Scarefest last week that there were these um, mats that people have with symbols and words and it kind of looked like a, a cloth um, Ouija board and I remember thinking to myself at the time <laughs> when the lights went out ah, um, what what that what it actually was and um, obviously I've, uh, there's a couple of people here I know have actually started to build their own little stands and they hang pendulums off them and then ask questions to see whether or not it moves around so that's another way that you could actually start looking at possibly doing some, maybe some experiment ideas. You know, does it move with certain questions? Does it move not move with certain questions? Um, not having the human sort of interaction with it as well or, or the possible what we call idiomotor effect, um, you know, possibly affecting it from a human perspective, you know, it's less likely for that to happen. I mean, then again, if you want to look at psychokinesis, that's a whole other story in itself. But, you know, starting off with that, are you getting answers? Are you not getting answers? Um, you know, you know what kind of information is coming up? Is it consistent? Is it consistent with one person and not the other? And what location-wise, like, does it happen in one spot? Does it happen none in others? Like, it's all this kind of you know process of elimination. You can start to narrow it down and go, well, it's more likely going to do this there than there. Why? And I love that stuff. So, you know, it's like chasing the dragon. I just love it. So, and I noticed, yeah, in Scarefest they had these mats already kind of ready to go. I thought that was kind of cool. So. <laughs> There's those, so that's another way to do it too. Um, there's also um, the National Ghost Hunting Day. Now, that originated last year. I was there at head, headquarters then. It was fantastic and amazing experience um, seeing uh, the live feeds from uh, quite a few teams. Um, but in the end, I think it was only about 70 teams around the world, <laughs> only 70. Um, and this year, they, I think they had about 80 or 85. And I know there were some Aussie teams that participated, which was really great to see. Um, but then again, that's a world experiment. So it's using the same questions being asked approximately the same time and then gathering the data that would have come back from any responses and then actually looking at that and seeing, are there any patterns? Are there any consistencies? What's going on? You know, what's, what country had more you know, responses? Was it due to the fact there were more investigations or was it more accurate in Australia? fingers crossed you know or was it you know you know anything any there was there anything that seemed quite unusual about 
the data that came back. And that's what I love about these types of things. And people are like, oh, National Ghost Hunting Day. I'm like, no, but it comes, you know, with, with some great information, the fact that we're doing this from such a global perspective and it's such a push for that. And, I, and of course, you know, there, there never will be full on paranormal unity, but I do believe there's paranormal civility or I believe in some of it. And I think that's probably about as close as we're going to get. So um, having it happening around the same time is really, really interesting. And of course, it has to be during the day here in Australia because we're always ahead. So we, mind you, again, investigating during the day shouldn't really be any different to during the night. So if spirits around 24 seven, we should be getting the same kind of interactions and or um, answers. Hi, Gary. How are you, mate? So yeah, so some really interesting stuff there. So lots of people doing different things. Um, a lot of people ask me, oh, you know, I want to get involved in it. I want to try and do my own stuff. You know, I don't even know where to start. Um, I often have mentioned in the past as well that you look at your own experiences, even if it's something that's happened that got you started. Look at that experience and say, okay, right, what happened? What's, what's something that really got you? What's something that happened that... You, wish, you know, if I could find out a way to recreate that or test it, that's the two different ways to do it. So can you recreate it? Sometimes it can be very difficult, um, particularly if it's environmental. Um, probably easier if it's from a psychological perspective. Or can you, um, so it's recreating it, or can you um, sort of test it out? So, okay, testing it out is probably going to be easier if it's in your environment, if it's something that's happened around you. So you can test out, like I said, with the pendulum, you know, test out whether or not that you know people's minds can over can can you know be in response so you're physically taking your body away but your mind well, from a psychokinetic kinetic perspective could possibly move it or is it spirit could there be a spirit out there could be a ghost out there or whatever is actually moving giving those answers um on you you know to provide to people that are asking it so that's the first thing like think about the, uh, the kinds of things you've experienced now if you don't get out a lot or you can't get out a lot or whatever the case may be, or you're in between investigations and it's quiet, um, you know, ask other people, look at information that's come through that all stories that you've read where something's happened. You think, geez, that'd be amazing. I wonder if there's a way in which that can be looked at further. Um, and most investigators, as we know, um, are really, really driven. We have such a driven curiosity. It's you either love the paranormal or you don't. Um, and that's why we, we stay and we stick with what we've got. So that, that driving curiosity should be a, as a great platform to be able to launch yourself onto different areas which you can start to look at. You don't have to write a thesis. You don't have to sit there and, and do a 12-page journal on how you set everything out. A lot of the time with investigating and you know with other investigators, we're doing it for ourselves. We're doing it to see if we can find our own answers. So go and, if from that point of view and go, okay, make notes. Put ideas together. I mean, data loggers, <laughs> data loggers are fantastic because um, not only do they, you know, um, put together, you know, have it in SD cards in, in stuff that changes with temperature. You've got all that data you can download. You've got that as a, a snapshot as well. Um, so if you've got equipment that's got data loggers in it and stuff like that, but making notes of your environment, we're pretty aware of all that kind of stuff. But literally using that drive, use that passion. And find ways in which you can see if you can recreate it and or test it. So the best two ways to do it as well. Hi, Mark. Hi, Nix. How are you? So, yeah, here's some, a couple of ideas for you to think about as well. Um, I'll post the link to freesound.org as well if you want to use some a couple of the sounds from that too. Um, again, like I highly recommend it. It's free and there's some really cool stuff you can use. Um, by all means, uh, test it out uh, and also post, post the link to how to create your own sound file as well, which is really, really cool if you want to start to do that too. So thanks so much for watching. Until next week.